In the previous video on bunker shots, we looked at the setup and why it's important that your setup needs to be different to what it is for most of your other shots. Now we want to have a look at the swing itself because this is where most players uh, do struggle. A couple of things to begin with, I'll just move that ball. I'm going to mark a line in the sand here. Now, this line is where I want the club to enter the sand. Don't worry about where that is in relation to the ball for the moment. I need to be able to control three things. I need to be able to control the amount of sand I take, the depth of sand, and the entry point, where how the club enters the sand. Now, if I hold the club just in my fingertips and make a short swing back, as my arm moves down and through the swinging weight of the club, makes it swing past my hand. So I haven't done that with my hand or with my fingers. I've just let the swinging weight of the club create its own momentum, essentially. And I want to utilize that when I'm playing the shot. So I'm looking to reduce the amount of manipulation to zero, if I can, when I'm playing these shots. So the first thing that I'm going to do is if I let the club swing, if I swing the club or pick the club up and then just let it drop, just like a hammer, the club will fall and it'll hit the sand and it'll make a, a thudding sound when it hits the sand. The first drill that I'm going to get you to do is to let the club swing back and as it's swinging down, have that sense of at some point the club wants to swing past your hands or catch up to your hands. And what I'm looking to do is time it so that, that it occurs and the club hits that line there. And you can see there's not much follow through here because all I'm intent on doing is letting the club hit the sand correctly. Now, if I put a ball, this about five centimeters in front of this line here, and my thought is not so much about hitting the ball, but again, making that same small swing, letting the club hit that line, then I'll get the ball out of the bunker without any problems whatsoever. So there was no thought about how much follow through I had. There was definitely no thought about trying to dig the ball out of the sand. All I was looking to do is let the club meet the sand correctly. And you might notice that with that swing that I made, it was quite a lazy action. So we don't need violence in a bunker. If we, we'll talk about buried bunker shots uh, in another video, but essentially the bunker action should be fairly lazy. Okay, so now we need to look at how that club is gonna work around your hands. And here's the strange thing. So much is talked about accelerating the club or accelerating through the shot. The reality is that acceleration comes from transfer of momentum. Now, what I mean by that is that when the club swings down and through, my arms will actually slow a little bit approaching the ball. When they slow, provided my wrists are free, the club will actually gain speed on its own. And even with that little movement that I just made there, the club had quite a bit of speed on it, but my arms weren't moving very fast at all. So the next drill, again, if we go back to the, the line in the sand here, is to have the sense, how do I time the slowing of my arms so the club takes off on its own and meets that line back and through? And again, if I put a ball there, that will be uh, quite a, an effective bunker shot. So getting the club to work into the sand is absolutely critical. Also watch the tempo of your swing. It doesn't have to be fast. Uh, as with those demonstrations, and if I play one more shot here, just to hit the ball out of the bunker, watch that the swings, it's not fast. It's quite an easy movement. Well, it's gone in the hole too. There you go, there's proof it works. Now, a couple of other things. A lot of players, think that you've got to pick the club up steeply and cut across the ball, you actually don't. One of the things that I talked about in the video with setup is that we want the handle lower here and you've got your hips down. So that means that when the club swings back and through, it's actually gonna swing back and through on a, a fairly shallow path actually, which is gonna help us to take the right amount of sand. The other thing is I'm not making any attempt whatsoever to try and swing the club away from my body and, and cut it across. I'm just allowing the way the club's set up at address to determine that for me. And you can see just with that practice swing that the club is swinging around behind me both ways. So when you're playing the shot, don't make it too difficult. Don't try and do too much with it. In fact, if I hit a shot, I'll just hit a shot this way, just to the edge of the bunker. And again, you'll see that the path of the club back and through is not a hugely 
manufactured movement. The club just swings around behind me both directions. Now, the more, the, the further I want to hit the shot and getting the feel for the shot is just about club speed. That's just gonna be related to club length. Now, there's no sort of um, linear way of thinking about the swing. In other words, if I swing it back to here, it's gonna go X meters. If I swing it back twice as far, it will go twice as far. It doesn't work like that. So finding the distance that you need to hit the ball is gonna vary uh, according to the sand type and according to your swing. So when you're setting yourself up, the next drill, or sorry, when you're practicing, the next drill is to draw two lines in the sand. So the first line that we did on its own was just about having the club meet it. This one's a little bit more challenging because not only did we want the club to meet this line here, but we want it to take the sand between the two lines. So when I swing the club back and through, I don't want to have the club sort of hitting well behind this line or well in front of the line. I don't want it to have it just skinning a bit of sand or taking a massive amount of sand. I want to be able to control exactly how much it's taking. So when I swing the club back and through, my club takes exactly the sand between those two lines there. Once you can do that reasonably consistently, then the ball position would be toward the back line there. So remember you're striking the ball with a slight descending blow for your bunker shots. So practice those two drills, first of all with a single line, just getting the club to meet the sand as it's uh, swinging back and through. And the second one is mark two lines in the sand there and practice taking the same amount of sand. For you to take the same amount of sand, the sand will need to be taken to the same depth. Uh, obviously that's a, a more skilled approach, but if you find that you've got a massive variation in that, then that's likely to occur on the golf course. So working with that drill, first of all, to get a feel of the rhythm of the movement, the correctness of the movement, you'll find that that will benefit your shots greatly. Anyway, practice those and you'll find that your bunker shots should improve fairly quickly.